Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, uh, I, it's, it's a real pleasure for, for me to be here, and I'm very appreciative. Um, uh, I'm going to be really brief. Um, and, and what I want to do is pick up from, from the Pasolini link, uh, although I think given the amount of time I have, um, James keeps me on a very short leash these days. The better he knows me, the, the shorter I find that I have uh, to do anything. Um, uh, <clears throat> um, I, I, I want to, 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 to ask about some um, uh, genealogical questions, in, in part because it's sort of following on, on what Miles is up to, but also, you know, I find myself uh, as somebody really moved and, and um, influenced by, by, by some of the work of the people in, in this room, actually a lot, and I, I won't try to say it all, but I did want to mention uh, Christina's Idols of Nations, uh, which is such an important step in uh, mapping the history of biblical scholarship in relationship to the question of economy. Uh, ditto for um, Aaron's work on Babylon, and also Fatima's uh, uh, work on the interpretations of Paul as, as a way of inventing uh, a European man. Um, uh, uh, Taylor, too, uh, you, you may hear echoes of some of your stuff, Taylor. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, as a sort of cheeky introduction, um, I, I want to read this, uh, on, only slightly uh, tweaked up. Um, it's by divine gift that I am what I am, and this gift hasn't uh, yielded nothing. In fact, I've worked harder than anyone, not me, <clears throat> but the gift. From Jakob Taubes and Giorgio Agamben to Slavoj Žižek in our land by Jew, the turn to Paul in continental philosophy has for these past decades generally presented itself as an important contribution and even as the essential element in a contemporary anti-capitalism. Um, I'll return to this and to the vexing question about why this turn to Paul as an anti-capitalist precisely has, like clockwork, functioned as a return of anti-Jewish pronouncements, especially in Baju and Zizek. I don't think, so, so just to be really clunky and blunt about everything on the way, um, uh, I think this is, uh, this is structurally built into the discourses we're inheriting. Uh, it's precisely when they feel that they want to be anti-capitalist that then they turn toward their Christianity, their sort of self-representations, by way of these biblical figures becomes more anti-Jewish. And that's because they're trying to be anti-capitalist. And the more that they get into that mode, uh, the more they get sucked back into this earlier game. I don't think this is at all accidental. <clears throat> For the moment, um, I, I want to start instead here with this quote from Paul uh, and, and the provocative explication. <clears throat> what if somehow, miraculously perhaps, or like a thief in the night, Paul is the great protester against the order of work as a means of salvation, has somehow become transformed into the very image of an economy of work without end, or perhaps of new forms of work without contract. If Paul may be read today as I do here as a new figure of work without contract, then of course the ironies would be striking. If the praise of the cessation of work and of the association of visions of redemption as a cessation of work were to have become instead the very dynamism of ceaseless activity, a kind of crystallization of hyperactive, self-funded overextension of oneself in time and space, then where would we be? What eschaton would have arrived? <clears throat> a second uh, pot-stirring gesture, just to be also sort of brutally uh, concrete, is that I want to suggest that we haven't taken seriously the reading of this turn to Paul as part of social movements. This is one of the parts of, uh, of our bigger project that I'm quite keen on. Um, and so the mapping of these gestures toward Paul from 1968 to now in relation to actual like social experiments um, and social movements and so on in which the different authors were participating is something I, I want to take very seriously. And my suggestion is that we have in someone like Bad Use Paul over time a very strong move from a 1968 story that he's going to tell uh, actually in the 80s to what he started doing later. <clears throat> in the early 1980s, right, Alain Badiou was still imagining that his own turn to Paul in that excellent piece of theater, The Incident at Antioch, indicated his own, own exit from a politics of violent takeover. 
this Parisian, his Parisian Maoism of the 1970s. And this exit it led him into a zone of self-reliant direct action, unconcerned about such violence. And the play is be you know, perfectly beautiful on this issue. The conversion of Paul uh, is a step away from moving uh, on reliance, uh, or, or, or it's a move away from reliance on uh, central uh, authorities, um, authorities uh, the play imagines as uh, involving Jerusalem and so on, and, and going into uh, a sort of freewheeling entrepreneurialism in some sense, uh, at any rate, uh, direct action as the text have, has it. Um, Badiou, at the time, as I've said, is, is still imagining that this breakthrough, this conversion of Paul, is about political violence and his own break with an earlier form of political uh, in, uh, uh, fantasy, which was about violent takeover of central agencies. <clears throat> what I'm suggesting here, and, uh, and, um, and I hope that you might want to push back. Um, what I'm suggesting is, suggesting is that in keeping with that nice old uh, Marxist adage that sometimes the real revolution we're actually in, we mistake for an earlier version of this story. And in this case, what I want to say is that if, for all of his reliance on Pasolini's Paul, which was about the break with fascism, right? Fascism is the problem that Pasolini's Paul is trying to wrestle with. Uh, Badiou in the 80s is presenting his work in the same way. And what I'm suggesting is that there's another revolution. Here's your entrepreneurial neoliberal revolution, which is probably more accurately the way to, to talk about some of these things uh, in the early 80s. <clears throat> Paul was in this context, <clears throat> sorry, this is Badiou just a few years ago. He's still talking about these things, and this was him at the Hebel Theater. Uh, where they enacted part of the incident in Antioch. And here, uh, and in the next slide, he's pretending to be, he's acting out sort of off the cuff. Um, uh, uh, one of the characters in another of his films, um, he's here uh, from uh, Ahmed, the philosopher. He is the demon of the city. He would hate that we were showing these films, uh, this picture, but <clears throat> he's a big boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul was in the context of this play in the early 80s. Just remember the slogans. Direct action at a distance from the state. It was the inauguration. Paul's conversion then becomes the inauguration of work not controlled, but also not funded by the central agencies of Jerusalem. Above all, it was the emergence of a community and the solidarity only of faith or trust meaning that it was a movement entirely self-reliant, entirely self-funding, living and dying by its own capacities to motivate itself, to enthuse itself, and to keep itself producing and consuming its own market, living, expressing itself, projecting itself as its own market. <clears throat> it was the emergence in these respects precisely of what Badiou would later formalize in a good Sartrean sense as a political subject, right? entirely subjective or self-reliant. Paul Badiou would soon say, was the man for our time, as he put it. But Badiou didn't yet realize it was because his Paul was becoming a perfect icon of a neoliberal free market and the entrepreneurialism which is demanded of us all. <clears throat> Paul was the, the man for our time, so to speak, so hear his voice. And perhaps you'll recognize yourself in it. There's a long, long, much longer uh, uh, paper where I did a lot of this preaching. I like to do this, you know. Uh, I can't resist it. Um, uh, recognize perhaps not yourself, uh, uh, but, but maybe those most hopeful workaholisms which work through you. Think of that first uh, line of Paul, that the promise makes you strangely work harder than ever before. Um, the real hard work begins once we stop working, so to speak, according to contract. <clears throat> um, I, I have various other things, actually, um, and I, I think I'll skip some of this because uh, it's sort of, I, I do, I spend some time in the longer version of this making the case that you have the, this sort of hyperactive Paul, 
right? And I focus on some of my favorite uh, moments. I love the bit toward the end of Romans when effectively Paul is saying, I'm done, you know, from Tel Aviv to Ibiza. It is finished, you know? I'm done preaching. And then he's like, um, and I'm coming to you. Uh, sorry I haven't been there yet. I'm going to get there soon. And when I do, would you send me further? I mean, the guy is like completely manic, right? And there's, there's, um, and so I kind of, I kind of play this up in the sense that, um, you know, consider the historical moment. Um, uh, he, the, 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 it was a disaster in Jerusalem, effectively. He has a handful of groups uh, organized along the coast of, you know, what's now Greece and Turkey, all of which are understanding him in a different way, half of which are totally uh, 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 moving in directions he doesn't like. Um, just a few lines down when he talks about um, his collection, which is for him, you know, absolutely essential, uh, which he's taking for Jerusalem, already he's dropping off, you know, important congregations because clearly they're not participating with him. So, I mean, here's, here's my Paul, he's manic, he's also sort of like really overextended and just kind of hurling himself forward almost in this uh, um, uh, kind of uh, wacky way. Um, uh, and, and also, of course, there, you know, as he sort of concludes that letter um, uh, or, or that section um, with, uh, with real anxieties about what will happen when he finally gets to uh, Jerusalem, he doesn't yet know that this is, of course, going to be um, a total disaster. Um, okay, instead... Uh, I want to say I want to say uh, something very quickly. Then, um, actually, just in a few minutes, I want to make a couple of gestures toward the genealogy that we were talking about around uh, Miles' work. And so, Miles is going back to um, uh, to Schumpeter, and I, I want to mention something about uh, Weber and uh, Zombart. Um, <clears throat> If Paul, strangely enough, this kind of militant Paul, may equally be read, you know, that is to say we can go back and read. I, I mean, I don't I talk here at all about Zizek, but you can see the same thing. Um, Zizek begins his career and becomes famous. And let's also remember that Badiou becomes the famous philosopher by way on, of some of the, uh, of, of the Paul stuff. Um, and, and so, you know, how, how do we analyze these things? Um, uh, Zizek uh, is, is in a similar situation, um, and uh, uh, okay, but what I wanted to suggest is that actually you might have these strange um, turnings around of function um, uh, precisely because of these very old histories uh, that, that we're all inheriting here, and so in just a couple of minutes I'll, I'll conclude then. <clears throat> Recall how for Weber, Max Weber, uh, capitalism is really taking off in someone um, like uh, 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 Benjamin Franklin, right? So that poster boy of American capitalism who pinches every penny or who finds that saving is a kind of liturgia or priestly service to a sphere divine. That is, in the language of Weber's sociology of religion, it's the places where a Christian break with the economy of work and measurable wage somehow re-enters the situation in the form of a strange new Judaism. This is, of course, all Weber. Weber considers the U.S. just such a place, remember, a kind of amalgam of Christianity and Judaism. The spirit of capitalism therefore mixes the openness of the gift, which is also to say the immeasurability of our debt, with an intensively bureaucratic or legalistic system of accounting. This is all Weber. I mean, it's, it's sort of like, never mind, I won't comment yet. In this spirituality, as a form of modern economic life, the idea is that one relentlessly measures everything, squeezing every penny precisely because there is no end to accumulation. But what would we do um, uh, if, if we considered um, uh, uh, Badiou's Paul in this respect? Because they are different, aren't they? I mean, just consider what it would mean to replace Benjamin Franklin with Alain Badiou's Paul in, a, in an effort to update the spirit of capitalism. What we would have, perhaps, is much closer precisely to what people like Luke Boltanski or Eve Cipello are imagining as precisely the new spirit of capitalism. 
They are, uh, if I may put it this way, describing a Ben Benjamin Franklin without job security, a Benjamin Franklin where there is even more precarity in the market and when an even more intensive form of self-reliance is necessary than the one which measures itself in terms of its accounts and its accumulations. I think, it's, I think the difference here, if we were to try to update Weber and play around with these biblical figures in contemporary forms, is that we would need to think of, I, I like my Paul, he's crazier than Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was an accountant, Paul's not. He knows he's not winning. Right? So there's this sense of this unsustainability that I think I like uh, in, in, this, in this figure uh, compared to Franklin. And I think that is something that we see, of course, um, in, in the work of people like uh, uh, Cappello and Boltansky uh, as they're, they're thinking about these things as well in sociological terms. Uh, not myself, but the dark gift in me. We're more self-reliant, more self-funding, more precarious, in a word, more entrepreneurial than ever before. Um, actually, what I'm most keen to do is to stop so that we have time to, uh, uh, to discuss these things together. So I hope that's enough to at least sort of suggest where, where I was trying to go. Um, uh, so thanks.